I'm Steph Strickland with GeekWire Studios here at AWS reInvent 2024, and we are talking about enterprise digital transformation. But even more than that, we're talking about what it means to be a pure play AWS service provider. I would like to introduce you right now to Michaela Goldrich. She is the innovation architect at Effectual. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for having us. Tell me a little bit about what that means to be a pure play AWS service provider. So it means that we only work with AWS. We're pure cloud with AWS. And we're really proud to be mentioned in the 2024 Gardner Magic Quadrant, actually, for uh, public cloud IT transformation services. We were the only pure play partner mentioned. Congratulations. I want to talk about trends, because given the work that you do and how laser focused you are, you probably see things that would be of interest to the people watching an interview like this. Um, specifically, initial AI implementation. What trends are you seeing in enterprise? So we've seen a lot of our customers have a lot of success starting with one small use case. So pick one thing that's going to start and build that business for you within your own organization. So that means pick something small with an app rapid ROI that will give you results quickly and help you build it within your business. It's interesting, uh, that is almost like a confidence booster. Start small, realize that that is something that, that works quickly and then you go to scale, if you will, uh, at that point. What are some tips that you would offer to organizations to help them move faster? It's a great question. So we always want to start with, you know, working with an experienced partner is a great way to get your foot in the door and get up and running quickly. Because it's really easy to start too fast or too slow and it's hard to be just on the dot. So we have a couple things that we use to help our clients do this. Uh, namely, we have a few accelerators. So these are sets of pre-built tools that we've built internally that we can use in our clients' environments to just stand up chatbots, for example, really quickly in weeks instead of months. When clients actually deploy some of these solutions, I imagine uh, there's a, a fair bit of relief because what you're doing is taking away some of the most time draining, the most uh, uh, time debilitating tasks in an organization, correct? And automating them? Absolutely. So, I mean, agentic AI, AI is everywhere we look now. It's like a, a bit overwhelming, right? Um, it's so, so hyped up. We're having a lot of success with our clients being able to just start small and help them understand everything that's being, you know, buzzed around them. And it's just a lot easier to get your foot in the door that way. We talked about some of the positives. Uh, tell me a little bit about the challenges and how you're helping your clients overcome those. So one really common misconception with AI is that if you use it, your data is becoming public, your data is being used to retrain or pre-train models, and that's simply not true. So it's a common misconception we see a lot, especially at the executive level. So we've had um, a couple of hard conversations going in with executives and helping them understand that it's actually not a problem and your data and your policies are covered the exact same way they would be any other any other policy or you know data service. Are there some almost like case studies or examples that you could point to that would help people understand, you know, how you've either helped a company master agentic AI, gen AI, uh, whatever the case may be. Tell me a little bit more about how this works in the real world. Absolutely, so the biggest trend that we see is workplace efficiency. People want to do their jobs better and faster. And we have seen two big major use cases in this. Uh, the first is transformation around call centers. So call center agents spend three to four minutes after a call just taking notes, saying what happened on that call. When we leverage generative AI, we can actually just do that for them, right? So all they have to do is go in, make sure it's exactly what they want, and hit submit. Cool. The other big one is uh, enterprise chatbots. So this is you know, the common use case that we hear. We hear about retrieval augmented generation. How can I access my internal data and have it be safe and secure, but also still helpful to my employees? And the, the answer is rad, and we do that a lot with our clients. As an innovation architect, what got you into this line of work? I have a very non-traditional background in getting into tech. Uh, I actually, I grew up intending to be a ballerina. I went to boarding school for it. It was like my whole life plan. Um, and I decided not to do that. And I took a computer science class my freshman year of college for a gen ed, and I fell in love with it. So one thing led to another, and here we are. I think that's amazing. Um, I think what it does show you one of the, the buzzwords we hear a lot of people talk about is the democratization of technology, data, and the insights derived from it. A company like yours actually can help achieve that goal, and there's a lot of non-traditional paths to get both uh, yourself onto the cloud, to be able to take advantage of some of these technologies, or also, in your case, uh, come at this from a non-traditional employment background. When you're talking to folks uh, to help sort of quell their nerves about making this transition, yeah. where do you start in your conversations to say that this is uh, going to be okay and you're going to walk them through this appropriately? So we always start with the use case. What is the business problem that you're having? What are you trying to solve? Where are your pain points? 
And then we can figure out what the right solution is. And sometimes it's not AI, right? There's a lot of solutions that need old school software and we can build that too, right? So we always wanna make sure we're giving the best and the right solution for the problem at hand. And typically once we get started with that, understanding where they're coming from, what they're trying to solve, and we step them through the security and that it's, you know, your data is not going to be used to retrain the next big model. Uh, it's usually pretty smooth sailing from there. Okay. I want to ask you finally, obviously as a pure play AWS service provider, this conference holds a lot of value mm -hmm. for you, but what is it that you most look forward to when you come to AWS reInvent? I think just meeting so many people. Uh, you know, one of the things I love about Effectual is how diverse our teams are. You know, we talked a little bit about democratizing tech. And there's so many different backgrounds and different personalities here, and I just love getting to see it firsthand. Michaela Goldrich, thank you so much for coming down and speaking to us today from Effectual, the innovation architect. No shortage of innovation here. I'm Steph Strickland, you're watching GeekWire Studios.